Say it's a great program. Their participation with the Mets, their sponsorship has certainly been outstanding in the last couple of years. And I've been involved in a number of their programs around the uh, state, saying hello to their, their, their customers. And I'll tell you what, it's been a great relationship, the Mets and City Bank. I was about to say, I've seen you at the SNY Play Ball Grand Ceremony earlier this year. So let's talk about your relationship with the Mets Alumni Association and making such great appearances on behalf of the Mets. Well, I've been uh, involved with the Mets organization since 1962. I signed, I was a young player at 17, and uh, I played my whole career in New York with the Mets. So I have no other association. I've done an awful lot of public relations for them over the years. It's been a great existence, great relationship. I enjoy it, and now I'm enjoying working with the Alumni Association and in anticipation of City Bank. When you hear the words New York Mets being a lifelong New Yorker and your involvement with them, what do they mean to you when you hear those words being mentioned? Well, it's, it's lifelong involvement with myself. Signing in 1962, I don't know anybody different. You know, some players have been on a half a dozen ball clubs, so do they have allegiance to anybody? You know, you, you have ties. I have the only relationship that's been with the New York Med organization. They've taken good care of me over the years. I've supported a lot of their programs. I've done a lot of their PR. I've done more than any player in the organization because of pure timing. 50 years, there's been a lot of programs going on. And I've done a lot in the community, you know, with the name New York Mets on. So uh, I, I can't wear a Yankee hat or a Red Sox hat. I'm a New York Met like them. Now the Mets at that point in time in 62 were replacing such teams like the Dodgers and the Giants. So what was that like for you? You were a New Yorker to well, being I was a, a part New of that. Yorker back in 62, obviously, uh, I was a Yankee fan. I was brought up in the Bronx. But, you know, you change allegiance once you sign a contract. New York was a National League town. They supported two teams. Now they brought back one. So the history of the Mets were they drafted a lot of older players that were related to the Giants and Dodgers to attract the fans. They did a great job creating a new program, a new image. And of course, then they started signing me young players. I was one of the first young players that made it to the Major League. And then we kept adding players, and that's when baseball became fun for me. The first couple of years were a little difficult having relationships with 35-year-old guys. But then when Sabota joined the club, Tom Moore joined the club, Buddy Harrelson, Tom Seaver, they were all, we were all the same age, we all played together, hung out together, you know, we had the same likes and dislikes. I hear Gil Hodges was a big part of turning the culture of New York Mets baseball and making a winning club. What did Gil Hodges mean for you in your career? Well, he's an inspirational leader that changed the ball club. You know, we lost for seven straight years. He came over. But I was fortunate to participate with Gil as a player, and he worked with me on fundamentals around the first base. I set the tone and the groundwork early by, by following what he said. And he was a great asset. He was a great teacher. He came back as a manager. And then playing for him, he was a very strict disciplinarian. Okay, something that probably the young team needed. Um, and he was a great leader. Uh, you know, he was a military guy, a Marine, so he was tough. He had one set of rules. And, uh, you know, today's market is a little different. You know, you, sometimes these managers look like they need 20 sets of rules. Gil wouldn't stand for it. He, uh, he led by example, and that was the way of his life. I know the schedule was probably different from when you played. But with this 2012 Mets team going into the halfway mark now, what would be the best advice if you were, you know, in the locker room with them that you would give to this 2012 you know, this Mets? This is the dog time of the year when the weather gets hot. You know, some of the stronger teams or the guys that have more players available to participate and contribute are going to win because if you ran with eight players like Chicago did, they had a great eight eight player lineup. By the time August came around, they ran out of gas. The Mets are using a lot of kids. They're all contributing. Winning is contagious, just like losing, and they're playing good baseball. The pitching is coming around. Pitching and defense win pennants. Okay, the Mets have to shore up their defense. The pitching is certainly doing well. Dickey's been outstanding. Santana's come back, and now you got to fill around those guys. Okay, but it's been a great experience for the fans. They love it, and anything can happen. Nobody's running away 
with the uh, National League East. Having won the World Series yourself, what would be like another good piece of advice to give to these younger players, you know, playing under pressure situations? Well, you can't let the pressure ball. You don't read the papers every day when you have a bad day. You know, read the cartoons, I guess. You know, it's, you know, you read about yourself when you have a bad outing. You know, it's going to affect you mentally. You can't do that. There's a lot of ups and downs in sports. You got to keep plugging away and giving it the best effort you can. And it's a long year. The best team's going to win. Now, being with the Mets during the tough years, what did that mean for you to finally hoist that first World Series in franchise history? It was a weight off your, off your shoulders. Uh, there's no, uh, no greater feeling than winning the World Series or participating in it. I was in two World Series. I had the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. We should have won the second World Series. We didn't. And, and changes in management or whatever really contribute to wins and losses, you know, some of the other ideas. We should have won the second year, so that should have been a two years. Just talk about giving back and how important it is to you and what it means for you to be an athlete, maybe just to inspire others to give back. Well, I've given back since 62. I've probably been to more functions, more hospitals, more charitable events. And some guys do, and some guys don't. You know, I think it's your makeup. I always think that if you're fortunate enough to play a game that you love, participate, and you've got some participation in the area, and you can help some people, why not do it?